Awesome. Okay, so what is the tear form of nobori? Nobori. Nobori must no. That nobori. No. This is a tear form. Tear form. Um tear form. Nobote. Perfect. Yep, nobote. How do you think you'd read this word? Uh hint, it's not do. It's not do. Yep, so okay. it's sakamichi. Perfect. Sakamichi, which you could probably guess means hill road. So a road path that's on a hill. Um, Wait. so our next word is q. Q is a na adjective. So q na noun. Um Q, Q, you might have seen this kanji before in like isoide and stuff, and it tends to mean like to hurry up, but Q is used to mean steep. For example, Q na saka is a steep hill. Q na saka, steep. Right. So Q na saka means is a steep uh, hill road, road on a hill. Okay. Um, do you remember what nagara meant? We learned this a while ago, so I, I, not that long ago, but um, we did learn this. Nagara. I remember. Nagara. If it... Nagara. If it is the case... That's a good guess, but um, that'd be nada. Nada would be if, or tada, or... I think those are the two. Oh, not, I, I know this one. Nagara is while you're doing yes. something, you're doing something else. Yes, I knew I taught it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> awesome. Now let's go read this sentence. What does it say? It's a nani yara butsu butsu to tsubuyaki na gara kyu na sakamichi o nobote iku. So we're talking about the G san in this context. Hi. Well, while the G san is going up the uh, steep hill street, he's uh, while he's doing that, he's mumbling about you know butsu butsu like <laughs> yes something. Yes, almost perfect. The only thing I would have is that specifically it's while muttering he does this, but in really it's like the same thing. <laughs> if you say while climbing up the hill he mutters versus while muttering he climbs up the hill. Basically the same, but officially uh, it's while muttering versus while climbing because that's what Nagara is attached to. Uh, so while he's muttering, he's climbing up the hill. Exactly. Um, next. Do you, this is something you couldn't translate, which uh, you can't, <laughs> but I'm just wondering if you remember what Iku tells us versus if it said like Iru or Kuru. It means that from the perspective of Khan, the old man is going up the hill further away from him. Perfect. Nice. So our next kanji right here is Dai. And this gets added to things who refer to the price of the item. So uh, it's like the cost. Dai. So it's a it's a suffix. Yes. For um, accounting I think, terms. I do think you can have it um by itself as well, but it's most commonly used as like a suffix. So like it's for like a category. So it's not like you don't you don't have like money die. You wouldn't say that. You would say like medical die, for example. This is the cost for the medical expenses. It's like oh, a, it's so categories you know, of costs. Yes. Um, so our next word is harao. Um, I had a note down here to make sure I told you the right meaning of it, which is to pay. Um, there's a second meaning for harao, which is to dust, and that also shows up in this book. Uh, but so, but the first time we see harao, it is referring to paying something like the bill. Uh, uh, specifically, I, I guess it's like a wiping type of thing. So you're wiping off dust and you're wiping away the bill. Right. So you see how that metaphor? Uh, you oh. wipe away the dead. Yes. <laughs> Clean out your, your, yeah, your, exactly. your accounts. Exactly. Um, could you read this for me? You meshi ni harao. I ate the, yeah, I, I, I ate the, no, no, I'm going to eat uh, the dinner. So... 
Good guess. So harau can mean the wipe away. And in our context, we're remembering that it can mean to pay for. No, 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 no. I'm paying for the I'm paying for the dinner. Yes, this You're is right. paying for the dinner. <laughs> Hi. So to the dinner, I will pay. So this is just with um you meshi on its own. What happens when we add this to it? How is this pronounced? You meshi die. Hi, you meshi die. So this is the cost of dinner. So with the cost of dinner, we're not going to use ni. What particle do you think we're going to use when you're paying off the cost of dinner? We use o. Correct, because there's intent there. <laughs> Perfect. What do you think the te form of harao is? To pay. Harao, this is an u verb. Hai. So it's harai, oh, harate. Perfect, harate. Nice. Um, so now I want this to be the this old man pays. What particle do you think we'd use? This old man yes. pay. Let's... He's doing the paying. Okay, so it would be kono i kono chisan ga harau. Hey, you can definitely do that. You could also do wa. Um, both of these will show up. You know, it just depends if you want to be get really obvious that it's the old man that's going to pay. I'm not paying. Old man is, that's when you use ga. And if you're just making a general statement, then you'd be using wa. So both of those are correct. Okay, morao. So morao is something that I feel like really confuses people because a lot of times they'll teach morao at the same time as kuredu and agedu because they're kind of in that same receiving, giving bubble of weird Japanese. Um, the difference is that kuredu is used when you're talking about yourself. When I kuredu, that means, oh, I'm so happy this happened. Thank you, is what kuredu means. If I morao, that means you kind of took it for yourself, kind of. It's, you shouldn't really use morao for yourself. However, you cannot use kuredu for others. You can't. You can't do third person kuredu. So instead, you have to do third person morao if you want to say, someone else received something. So if I said dorobo wa douka o morao, this is a good sentence. Thumbs up. <laughs> it, it means that the thief received money, received coins. And that that's really the only way you could really say this. The thief received coins. You can't use could do here cuz doesn't uh make sense. Uh cuz you're unless you're the thief. So if it said ore wa douka o morao, that kind of means like I take the coins for myself <laughs> is uh, how that changes the meaning. So yeah. totally oh. you, without permission kind of a thing. You, you exactly. took it. I receive it because I want it. Basically. Okay. okay. Um, it's a little bit like teasy feeling. So it's not like a rude thing to say, but it insinuates you're just kind of ha 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 ha. Kind of, kind of like see. if you have gum and clap and the kid like takes their gum or something. <laughs> um, okay. Can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Yes, it's kon wa majutsu shi kara mado seki o morao. Perfect. Meaning, what do you think this means? Kon took the magical stone from the magician. Hi, it can mean that. Since this is written in the third person, it's probably just receive. <laughs> if instead I said oh. ore or watasiwa, then it would be I have taken it for myself. So that, that's like the big thing I... to notice. What is being attached? Is it I or a third person? So Khan is the main character. So if Khan's talking and he has morao, it is definitely going to be I receive, which is what we're going to be seeing in the sentence, in the official example sentence. But I just wanted it to be clear that if you're talking about someone receiving in the third person, morao is what you use. It's just you don't use it in the first person unless you're saying I'm taking it from myself. Um, okay. so how would you say I'll receive coins from the old man? How would you say that? Ore wa chisa, oh, I receive. Yes, you're right. Ore wa is great. Okay. Ore wa chisan kara douka o morao. Perfect. 100% correct. Awesome. Okay, so now building off of that, 
So I had kata right here because I find that's easier when you're first learning this. Um, instead of kata, you can use ni. So this sentence right here could be um, doroba wa bajutsu shi ni douka wo morao. And it's exactly the same. There is no difference between these two sentences, except for kata is easier for Japanese learners to remember. <laughs> That's Hi. the only difference. Um, so also with morao, you can have, you know, te form with morao. So like haratte morao means I'll make you pay. I'll receive the payment because I made you do it. Uh, can you do me a favor and read the sentence for me? Mado machutsu shi wa deshi ni naru dai o harate morao. Perfect. Harate uh, morao. Yes. Yeah. So this uh means um the magician receives basically payment for from his apprentice for letting the apprentice become from somebody. Uh, this was not a good sentence example because uh, deshi ni naru would be like deshi ni as well. <laughs> becoming a student. This is the price for becoming a student. This is that price thing. But literally it's saying the magician receives the price, uh, receives payment. He forces someone to give him payment uh, in order for that person to become his apprentice. Uh, so this was like a nonsensical se sentence because I couldn't think of a good sentence using our vocabulary. <laughs> um, Hi, but it does make sense. So this is a student fee basically. Yes. That is what that would be. Like a tuition. Hi. Um, uh, nice. So now we have this sentence for you to read and tell me what you think it means. Ore wa yume shidai o chisan ni haratte morao. I um the the old man pay the old man pay f for my dinner. Yes. The old man pays for dinner. And I'm like receiving that. I'm making him do it. I make the old man pay for dinner. So officially it's, I receive the old man paying for my dinner. But it literally means I made him do it. <laughs> Somehow. Um, really? This morale can be, It's it sounds very like a very active thing. It, when, it is, when we say it, receive, it, it sounds so passive. You know, I received mm -hmm. it. But the way that, you translate yeah. it, it's it's an active thing. I yes. made you pay. Exactly. So if you were having like a, you'd conjugate this differently for passive. And there's also causative as well as like a different form. This this modal is kind of, um, it's not normally like making someone do something. Normally it is the main character is going to do something which leads to this as a consequence, kind of. Uh, for example, if I was like um, the if I was going to morao gum for someone in class, that kind of insinuates I took my hand, took it out of their food, and said, "Aha! I received gum from you, the gum from you, but I just stole it." Right? They had they have like the gum out, and you just take it, and you're like, "It's mine now." But you might say, "Ha, morata! I have received it." So it's it's very much active morao. In the first it's very person. similar to the causative form then. It is to super cause it to happen. To causative. The reason why you use morale versus causative is that morale is childish. Hence why I keep on using the stealing gum uh, example. <laughs> mm. it's, a, it's some kind of childish thing. So if you're just going to make somebody do something, you're going to bully them to do it, or you're just like making a general statement, you're not going to use morale for that, right? Because this gives off a little bit of a childish kind of like you're bullying somebody a little bit or like teasing them in a little bit of like a teasing kind of way. That's so like, ha ha, I will receive this for myself. So if you're laughing to yourself, you might use morale. It makes sense Hi. when you'll see it in the context here why the character uses morale, um, which I think is going to be the next slide after this. So yosh. Um, yosh is basically like saying, okay. And then you're like, you start something right afterwards. It's kind of like a, like a refresher on like hyping yourself up to do something. So when you're hyped up Hi. to do something, you say, yosh, and then you start it. So it's very similar in English. You're just saying, okay, let's go. You know, yosh, ikimashou. Would be, um... Hi. Okay. So um, before we read this, this wa right here, this is not subject wa. This is topic wa. So normally this would be 
marked by like O, oh, like I told you earlier. It's being marked by Wa here because the they they just want to say like they're making it really um dramatic. As I said, it's, okay. this is like a childish sentence. Um, but yeah, let's go read this. So Yosh, ore no, you meshi dai wa kono chisan ni ah haratte morao. So it means, ha, huh, the old man, he's going to pay for the dinner, for yes, the cost for of dinner. For my dinner. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. So it has that little like childish little thought process going here. So something I forgot to make a lesson is a difference between morao and morao. Um, this right here is called volational form. It's a big word. That's basically like saying, let's do it. And this is commonly used when you just decide you're going to do something. So basically, it's like to decide to do it. So a lot of times you'll say all oh, with yosh. Like I said, uh, yosh ikimasho. That's an example that for yosh iko. So a lot of times this let's do it will be connected with the yosh. Because it's uh, but you don't need to have a second person. So when you say let's do it in English, it insinuates there's a second person you're talking to. Uh, this does not insinuate that in Japanese, but it can be used to insinuate yeah, if you want to uh but it just means let's do it but it can be in a first person kind of way um I, but yeah next time this so pops this up is, we'll get a slide for it <laughs> this is yosh morao yeah exactly let me receive this let me receive this <laughs> let's start me <laughs> receiving this right now <laughs> now hi exactly okay do you happen to know this kanji Omo. Nice. Meaning you know so much think. kanji. <laughs> yep. To think. Specifically <laughs> to think in a general way, not to like use your brain thinking. Um uh, use your brain thinking would be from the the kanji from the word imagination. So so actually no, it'd be kangai. You had me kangai. Um, kangai. So, so both of these mean to think kan kan god. Um, the, so for example if I was like what's 5 plus 5 and you were like 10 that's not a mole that, that, that doesn't make any sense you just used your brain so if you're using your brain that's kangaidu or like if you're pondering mm. over the secrets of the universe that's kangaidu a mole is more like I like purple do, 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 do. you know it's it's just like passive thinking <laughs> Versus, versus oh, like intentional thinking kind of I um now you bring up this point I see omo come up at the end of the sentence quite mm -hmm. often yeah when because when it yeah. translated in English it just mean like I like to do this or I want to do that or something like mm -hmm. that I forgot I, I could see it being that it's just like a way to kind of just say oh I think blah 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 but you're not like pondering on the top right it's kind of like it's basically your emotional thoughts is omo so like you say, like, correct, you'd see a moment with like, I think I like something like, or I think this guy's a cool person. But just like that. Hi, hey, but um, how would you say the old man thinks? What particle do you think we should go right over here? The old man is thinking. So it's, ji song ga omo. Yes. Um, this would be a little bit aggressive. Um, so wa would be normal. So ga would mean you're specifically saying it's the old man that's thinking this. No one else. We're specifically uh, saying the old man. So wa is more likely to pop up here. Uh, because even though I, I called it passive, there, there is intent, I guess, to thinking. Um, as a random thing, a lot of these part I think almost all of these particles could fit in a certain way. For example, o would be used to mean thinking about. Jisan o omo means thinking about oh. the old man. So it kind of adds an about turn. And you can also mm -hmm. use to to mean thinking in quotation marks, old man. <laughs> so, thinking the word old man. Old man. In, exactly. In right. So so those also can pop in there. Hi, Wait, hi. what if you use ni here? Ni. Um, that'd be thinking towards. Ni omo. Thinking towards the old man. <laughs> yeah, so maybe <laughs> if um if you had like the one with telekinesis powers, that, that could pop up. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That is cool. Okay. 
Um, so our next word is so na koto. Do you happen to remember what koto means? Koto is um, an event of some sort. Yeah, it's kind of like a event. container for some generic things. Exactly. And so na basically means it's a lot of times what we translate as that sort of event. But all it's really doing is basically underlining the word event and saying it in bold and being like, look at this. Look at the word event is is what it's doing. So you hear you hear konna, sonna, and anna with yeah. with um nouns, and all it does is like underline and bold that noun, kind of like adding ga if it's a subject or um wa if it's an object. Um, uh, hi. the reason why, uh, in case you're curious, why you might use um konna vs like sonna. And vs um, Anna has to do with when was the last time you talked about the event or when did the event occur? So sonna tends to refer to it was mentioned in the last line, and konna tends to refer it will be mentioned in the sorry sonna means the previous line. It, the the event was mentioned in the previous line probably, and konna tends to mean the event is going to happen in the next line you're going to read, and Anna means we're just bringing up the event suddenly. We're just bringing it up. I was just thinking about it. it happened a while right. ago. Um, so if I said um, there's, I would ne I I I I do not think such a thing as that. What particle do you think should go in here? I do not think such a thing as that. Yeah. So I I did I do not think about that kind of a thing. Yes. Right. Exactly. So, um, it's an O. Yes, it is O. <laughs> it's hard I, when you translate things. I'm thinking about that. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Kind of like, about, about things like but, that. But you mentioned that other particles can work too. Yes. So, if so this wa was, can also work. Uh, not in this case. So, wa is marking who's doing the thinking here. And so would ga in this context. So, my, my point is that if you just had something with this right here and a motteru, uh, these could all like fit in there and it would still make a grammatical sentence. It'd make a different sentence, but it would all make grammatical sentences. So if it says, so na koto wa omote nai, that means that sort of thing would not think that. Um, it would be what that would be saying. Um, so that, that that's how that would like change the meaning. So like if this said to, I... for example, so na, ko, so na koto to omote nai, would basically would make it very direct. Like I did not think that sort of thing. Um, so you probably wouldn't say that uh, with the word son na koto, but there's a lot of sentences where you would have something that's more in quotation marks. You can have a filler word in here as a random note, because even though it's a direct quotation, it can be a direct quotation with a filler word. So it doesn't have to be word for word direct. It just has to be um, very similar direct. Just if, if it makes sense without the word about, then it's probably to. And if it makes more sense with about, then it's probably o. So I do not think about that side of type of thing makes it o. Uh, our next kanji. Hey. You happen to know this one? It's you met. Yep. You met. Um, so, oh, yes. <laughs> this is when we see me. Jisawa uh, yume ni omo. This means yeah. the grand the grandpa thinks in a dream. Yume ni omo. So he's an example of He work. thinks in the dream. In thinks the dream in he the thinks. Dream. Yes, exactly. Uh, not he not thinking towards the dream. Not, not like, in this context. He's not thinking about the dream. Yep. He's thinking in the dream. <laughs> oh boy. This could really get confusing. This neat. It's yeah, so... so me is very confusing. Um, can you read the sentence for me? You may need more or more than I. Hi. So this more um, kind of adds an even kind of meaning. So even in you may or more than I. What do you think this is saying? Even in my dream, I would not think. That. Perfect. Yep. Exactly. Nice. And our next word is daro. Daro is basically a way to add vagueness to a sentence. It's commonly translated as I wonder or probably, or is that right? Um, in this context, it's going to mean um, probably. 
I'll put but it, it it has all those meanings depending on who's saying it and how they're saying it and what the topic's about. But basically, you can think about it as just adding that uncertainty because we love uncertainty in Japanese. Never make certain sentences. It sounds weird. Very, it's too aggressive. So you want to add dashi and daro and kashira and all those kind of vague words. Um, in in general, daro is slightly masculine, but it, it's gender neutral. But kashira is is feminine, and in general, these two can have the same meaning. But anybody can use daro, but a girl, a guy is not going to use kashira unless like something weirds going on. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, can you read the sentence for me? Chisan wa machutsushi daro. Hi. What does this mean? Meaning, um, the old man, the chisan, uh, is a magician, isn't he? Yes, exactly. It could mean that. It could also mean, I wonder if the old man's a magician, or it could mean the old man's probably a magician. All of those are grammatically correct for translations of the sentence. So that's why knowing the sentence in context can help uh, you guess how to translate it to English. But on its own, all of those are grammatically correct interpretations. Hi. Uh, and next is kedo. We might have seen this. I don't know. I, I, it's all blurred together. Uh, <laughs> but this means uh, <laughs> but or however. However, kedo. Um, kedo, um, keredo, and dakedo are all the exact same word. There's no real difference between these. Some places will tell you keredo is a little bit more polite, but it's to the extent that the same person will use both versions in the same paragraph. So there's no real difference uh, between kedo Takedo and keredo. They're all just but and however. Um, there, there's no actual difference. Um, but maybe but use keredo if you're writing an essay. It's it only comes at the end of a at a, of a sentence, right? Yes. Does it come at the beginning? Um, dakedo, dakedo tends to be at the beginning of a sentence. So dakedo, blah, 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 blah. But theoretically, all of them could in very specific occasions occur at the beginning of the sentence. Um, but dakedo is the more likely one that will be the but at the beginning of a sentence, which is actually just kedo right here, but with da, the copula <laughs> in front of it. Hi. It's not actually a different word. I guess keredo is theoretically a different word, but I guess you could say this is a slurring. The dirt, the de has been dropped, but it's all the same. Uh, you do not say da keredo. That would be weird. So. Hi. Okay, so let's go read the sentence. It's sonna koto chisan wa yume ni mo omotte inai daro kedo. Meaning, um, uh, such a thing, uh, even in the, in the dream, um, the old man would not uh think. I I I probably hi perfect yep so but such a thing as that i'm pretty sure that the old man wouldn't <clears throat> even in a dream uh think that <laughs> would be uh my translation but that your translation was perfect too eh. there's so many ways mm. you can translate things no. that's why i'm not a translator it gives you like too much anxiety there's like, too many ways it could be <laughs> too many possibilities awesome kanji check Okay, let's see. Hey. Do you remember this guy? This guy's pretty hard. Which one? I'm sorry, it's load. Okay, uh, sue. Nice. And what does sue mean? Sue mean a, a cane, a stick. Perfect. And next is this one. Um, sakachi michi. Yep, sakamichi. And this guy. This one, you may she die. Perfect. And uh, for once, I managed to get done on time. Oof, I did it. Yay. <laughs> did not... <laughs> Hi. And we finished. So we you've read um six paragraphs so far of our. Yay. So yeah, that's what that number <laughs> what is. What an that's accomplishment. A... <laughs> so much. <laughs> I mean, this is a pretty hard book, I, I feel. So it's, pre pre it's a real we, accomplishment. I, I feel like. 
I feel like you 